the Cowboys have come to Bryant Stadium from Kissimmee, looking to take down the Lakeland Dreadnoughts for the first time since 2007. And as for Lakeland, they are looking to keep a perfect season going. Right now, the Dreadnoughts 11-0 and marching towards a Class 7A state championship. Cowboys, Dreadnoughts, coming up next on Bright House Sports Network. Football comes back to Bryant Stadium. Welcome to the regional semifinal where the Lakeland Dreadnoughts are hosting the Osceola Cowboys. It's the Subway Restaurants game of the week. Second season for head coach Doug Nichols for Osceola as his program, the last to beat Lakeland back in the regular season. That was 2007, four years ago. Now, in 2011, this team only allowing just over 11 points per game and scoring almost 40. Osceola comes in here tonight on the artificial turf, expecting to advance. Then on the other side, the Lakeland Dreadnoughts, another stellar season for Bill Castle. 13th undefeated season for the Dreadnoughts Chief. Eighth consecutive year where Lakeland has won at least one playoff game. They are indeed a dynasty here in Polk County. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us alongside 15-year NFL veteran Mark Royals. I'm Drew Felios. Mark, we've seen these two programs before, Osceola and Lakeland. They've got so much history, and really, when you size them up, very similar styles of play. That's the beauty of the football game tonight. It's two teams that know each other very well. They both like to run the football, so possessions are going to be critical. Mistakes are going to be critical. They always are. So it, it's going to be an old-fashioned woodshed game. Line up. You know what I'm going to do. Can you stop me? Can you stop me? Well, last year, Lakeland really couldn't stop anybody defensively, but this year, Mark, they're getting it done mainly because of their two defensive Events. Yeah, it really starts on the defensive side with their defensive end. A couple of really dynamic playmakers. Look at Randy Hampton, a very quick guy, extremely strong, a big playmaker on the other side. Jalen Stevenson, 19 sacks for one season. You got to be kidding me. They'll have their work cut out for them, though. They're going to have to set the edge. Osceola likes to run the football. Can they turn the, the ball up in the middle to let the defenders get in there and make a play? Should be a very interesting game. Mark Osceola doesn't just run it. They pound it, and they do it with Stephon McRae, one of the premier running backs in Central Florida. Yeah, he's outstanding. He's sneaky fast, they call him. He likes to get on the edge, and if he does, he can outrun the defenders to the end zone. What he's done the best, he's really improved his practice habits. The coach told him, if you want to play at the next level, you're going to have to learn how to prepare better. That's what he's done. Spends a lot of time studying film. The guy's averaging over eight yards a carry. He gets it done. So what a con Contest. This should be 22 games between these two teams this year. Only one loss between Lakeland and Osceola. It's the Dreadnoughts hosting the Cowboys coming up next on Bright House Sports Network. So we get set for Osceola and Lakeland from Bryant Stadium. And tonight's telecast is brought to you by Subway Restaurants. Come into your local Subway for breakfast in November. It's buy one, get one on a six inch breakfast sandwich. That's good from 7 to 9 a.m. every day. Subway, eat fresh. And by Sagicor, wise financial thinking for life. As we are awaiting the kickoff, let's send it down on the field. The third member of our crew is jacked up for this one. What's up, Brooke Bennett? Hey, Drew. Well, gosh, you know, we talk about high school stadiums. Bryant Stadium, one of those that you just can't really compare to anything else. This stadium, 1941, 70 years old. Can you believe it only cost $60,000? But they've had an amazing turnaround here. New turf. This turf was actually put in by Lakeland Regional Medical Center just down the road. Beautiful here. You look at the, the big jumbotron behind us. Amazing. Drew, this is a place right now that is getting fired up tonight. Yeah, and you know, a lot of schools, Mark Royals, have tried to duplicate that Jumbotron, but I haven't seen one that looks quite like the one to our right. Yeah, I think the first time I came here and saw the Jumbotron, I was like, you gotta be kidding me. This is a high, high school stadium, and now they've added the artificial surface, and I mean, this looks like a small college atmosphere, and they do it right here, have done it right for a long time. Just love Bill Castle, what he's been able to do over the years. So to kick off, Caleb Puff. Kicks it short, and it'll be fielded at the 16-yard line. And up to the 25, that is where the Cowboys will start as this Osceola attack led by Karan Williams. He'll be running the show tonight for the team in white. And Karan 
not going to get many chances to throw the football. This Osceola program likes to run it. They don't just like to run it. They live by running it. Yeah, they do. And Bill Castle said they do run the football, but don't sleep on them because they'll lull you to sleep and then try to hit you over the top. So they're well aware that if they have to, they can move it through the air. So first down and movement early on the first play. Randy. Prior to the snap, encroachment on the defense, five yard penalty, first down. This Osceola offense will take five steps forward, and there's the skill player, Stephon McCray. He gets it done. Josh Antoine, also number 80, a basketball player with Harrison Small and Reggie Hall. The offensive line, a tight knit group, Mark, across the board. They are all seniors. Center, Heath Rinkus, has a 4.4 GPA. Well, that's why they call it student athlete, getting it done in the classroom as well. Very impressive. So they try and hand it off, and it's a pickup of one. Stephon McCray on the carry. This Lakeland defense led by Randy Hampton and Jalen Stevenson. As Mark said, these guys are fierce. Demetrius Childs and Devin Denson up front. There's the rest of linebackers. Leading tackler is T.J. Simmons right in the middle, along with Madden and three. The secondary, Brian Mitchell is a great story. Couldn't even start on the JV team. Coach Castle said he has defied all odds. And he is starting wearing number 16 tonight in black. Hand it off one more time. And it's a short pickup. Reggie Hall is not going to get much because I'll tell you what, Logan Cochran was right there, number 21, and also Mr. Hampton, Mark, he is going to be busy all night long. Yeah, he's going to be. And as we talked about in the open, uh, creating that edge as a defensive end is very important in the way that Osceola likes to run the ball. But this is a guy that gets after the quarterback, a very dynamic player. Talking to Coach Castle about his defense, I told him, I said, for an 11-0 team, I've not heard a lot about your football team. I said, you know what? This has been an under-the-radar year. Our team plays very, very well together as a football team. Third down and three. Again, movement. And I believe on the right side, it was Randy Hampton jumping, jumping early. Prior to the snap, encroachment on the defense. So we'll Five yard penalty, first down. down. For Osceola, they needed three. The penalty will give them five, and they'll spot it at the 38. And this is going to be probably one of the quicker football games that you'll see for the year because they both like to run the football and mistakes like that you can't you have to limit possessions and uh, free five yards right there we talked about mistakes there was one of them early in the football game well, first down and 10 they'll run it with McCray he's tackled immediately at the 40 yard line and a good quick play by Randy Hampton as we take a look at head coach Doug Nichols and Mark this guy right here paid his dues 16 years as an assistant at Osceola eventually went over to Liberty High School spent three years there and the opening of Liberty then came back to Osceola he says this is where my home is and I think he is here until he retires yeah he said he planned to be here four to five years move back to West Virginia well it didn't quite work out like he had planned second down and eight and here's the quarterback taking off Karan Williams and Williams around that right side gets it down to the 39-yard line. That's a 23-yard pickup and good for a Cowboys first down. Yeah, Karan Williams does a really excellent job right here of finding the seam on the outside and has tremendous burst to get through the opening and get it up the field. But that's what Osceola does. They take advantage of their opportunities, like to, to run the ball, mix it around, and he does an excellent job of selling the fake and then getting it on the outside. Makes the most of his opportunities, Mark. Only 38 rushes this year, eight touchdowns with that. Yeah, you can clearly see that he's got a lot of ability with the ball in his hand to get it up the field. Very, very explosive player. So first down and 10. They go right up Woo! the gut. A big hit right at the line of scrimmage. Oh, mercy. 96, Stevenson, and also 98, Demetrius Childs. Let's take one more look, though, and see who really lowered the boom. Yeah, we, we talk, talked about in the open about a, a woodshed game. I mean, that's bringing the thunder up the middle right there. Very physical play. That's what we're going to see all night. Two teams that like to run the ball, 
Uh, you're going to see a lot of contact. And I don't know how far we are away from the field, but it sounded like that hit was right in the press box. It was so loud. <laughs> That was T.J. Simmons, the leading tackler, a physical and downhill player. Second down and 10. Pitch now. Option play. Dreadnought's waiting for it. So gang tackled as Reggie Hall carried the football again. Simmons was the man leading the way. Yeah, excellent job right there by the Lakeland defense of, of sniffing that out and stretching it out and then coming up with T.J. Simmons there to finish it off. But that's kind of what you have to do. You have to set that edge and let the pursuit uh, attack the football. Great job. Well, this offense very unorthodox, Mark. It is out of the Georgia Southern style of football. You look at how they run it. Very different. You don't really see it in high school football. This is a little mixed in this direction. Ball was on the ground and the Dreadnoughts have picked it up. Lakeland's got it at midfield. Great job defensively. Staying at home. We talked about that offense, the midline option. A little bit of trickery right there. It looked like the handoff. There was a problem getting the ball to the running back. You can see it never got into the running back's stomach. The ball is on the ground. Lakeland able to scoop it up, heading the other way. That's a great job defensively of really keeping your position. When you play a team like Osceola that moves it around like that, uh, gap discipline is very important. Lakeland on the spot there with a big turnover. So after Jalen Stevenson comes up with the football, Raheem Dumas now takes over first down and 10 from the 49. Dumas now rolling right down the field. Receiver was open. He goes short with it. And Diedrich Galishaw has it at the 36-yard line as we'll take a look at this Lakeland offense. The dependable Taylor Placidas at running back. Raquan Southward, though, is the main target without a doubt. Cunningham, Gallishaw, who just made that catch, and Ian Bacon, the tight end, and there's the big guys up front. Evan Goodman, number 57, Mark, a premier player, one of the best in the state on the line in high school football. Uh, there's no question about it. He's got the size, got the strength, and getting the notor notoriety, which he should get. He's a talented player. And now Dumas takes off with it as he picks up a couple. And it'll give us a chance to look at this Osceola defense. Garvin Daniels up front. Brings the emotion along with Montgomery, Brackville, and R.J. Butler. The linebackers led by Akeem Francis right in the middle. Number 11 brings all the emotion. Sanchez and Smithson with him, and there's the secondary. Dominic Davis, a 3.8 GPA, and Brandon Baker, number six mark, will have the assignment of checking Mr. Raquan Southward all night long. Yeah, good luck with that, right? You bet. Second down and about a Placidus. Taylor Placidus able to pick up four, and they're still driving him back. This young man, quite a story. He is not very big, Mark, and not a prototypical running back that you would see, heck, even on the Little League football level. That's how small he is. Yeah, sometimes the size doesn't always tell the story, though. We see it week in and week out, these undersized kids, and you can't measure the heart of a player. And this kid's got a big one. Uh, he'll pour it up in there for an undersized guy. I like kids like that. I say it every week. You give me 11 guys like that, I can make a football team. Third down and five now for the Dreadnoughts. The running back is Forrest Cunningham. An early movement. I believe Lakeland jumped a little early. Prior to the snap, ball start on the offense. Five yards, still third down. So Bill Castle talking the next play over with Raheem Dumas. Just another year, his 36th season as Lakeland's head coach. And look at the record among the best in football at any level. When we come back, the Dreadnoughts will have it third down and 10 after this. We're just underway at Bryant Stadium. There, a look at the Osceola Cowboys marching band. They have settled in, and so have we. No score here midway through the first quarter. Red Knots have it, third down and 10 from the 37. Dean Dumas is the quarterback. Now Dumas to throw. He's under a rush, and he'll go down. Back at the 42, good pressure that time. And Deshaun Montgomery able to get a hand on him and send him to the turf. Yeah, good job coming off the edge here with a lot of pressure. 
Raheem Dumas tries to step up, loses his footing, and gets him on the ground for a sack. But that's a that's good pressure coming from the outside. That's what you have to do. You have to make the opposing quarterback uncomfortable. You can see he tells from his back shoulder he's got the pressure, tries to step up, unable to do so with the footing. So the Dreadnoughts will punt it away, a high snap. And Ian Bacon will get it away. This is not a good kick. It goes out at the 27-yard line. So a bad field position for Osceola. They'll come out as we size up. Both of these teams, there you see points nearly identical. 34 for both programs. Points allowed, both outstanding defenses. Rushing yards, Mark, I think the team that rushes for the most yards tonight will probably be the team that wins. Yeah, that and mistakes. And then you look at the passing yards there, decided advantage for Lakeland with over 127 yards a game, only 35 for, for Osceola. And you have to wonder if Lakeland's able to shut down Osceola's running game at all how difficult it's going to be for that offense to function because they're not very effective through the air. Well, they'll take the handoff, and here comes the quarterback, Karan Williams. He picks up three. He's taken down by John Madden, the senior linebacker. And how about that, Mark, for a football name? Yeah, that's a great name. And, uh, you know, I'm sure he gets a lot of jokes about John Madden. Hey, you're the guy. And, no, but... <laughs> So that's a tough one to live up to. But again, he's one of those undersized kids that uh, just makes a lot of plays, uh, smart, always in the right position, and just got a high motor, just flies around the football field and has a lot of fun. Second down and seven. Back to throw now. Williams wants his receiver, and it's backed away. This Osceola team, only with an unofficial mark, 12 completions coming in to this year, yeah, to, and that, to this game. That's exactly what Coach Castle talked about. They run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, and then they're going to try to hit you over the top. And if hopefully, you know, he's thinking the defense is lulled to sleep, uh, unable to connect there. But we're going to see that throughout the night. But their, their bread and butter is running that football, establishing that, and then they'll take their shots here and there. So Hampton get the pressure on them that time. Now a third down and seven. Let's see how they respond. Also, Mark, in third down in long situations. Williams will give it to his running back, and this is going to be short. Stephon McCray picks up two yards. Yeah, you talked to Doug Nichols during the week. He talked about special teams and how important it's going to be in this football game, but he said how much they work on special teams during the week. We saw the bad punt by Lakeland, created the field position for Osceola. Lakeland then steps in with their defense and forces Osceola to punt. But keep an eye on that, the field position throughout the night. Go back, Hayward! So the Cowboys will punt it away on a fourth down and four. A lot of contact down at the 45-yard line. And Dreadnought's trying to stay away from the football. As you saw the wrestling match, Trey Dempsey trying to not let that football hit him. So Lakeland will have it back now from the 41. As we take a look at the series history and Osceola, those two big wins, Mark, in 2007. That was the same year the Cowboys went all the way to the state championship game and finished runner-up to St. Thomas Aquinas. Yeah, that's a tough assignment to beat Lakeland once, but if you beat them twice in the same season, but then as you look, Lakeland's been on a run here. There's been several close games. Uh, tonight we're expecting uh, another close game, but they've got quite a serious history. They know each other very well, know exactly what each other are going to do. It's up to each team on execute tonight. First down and 10. Dumas now takes that handoff and takes it along the right side for 11 yards. That will be a Lakeland first down right there. Yeah, I was watching him in warm-ups, Dumas. He throws a really nice deep ball. He's got a very strong arm, uh, not his natural position. Uh, but you can see right there, when he gets in space, he can make a lot of things happen and uh, very capable running that offense. Now, key note about this Lakeland team. Last week, they had the playoff game mark to St. Cloud. They were leading in that contest 26 to nothing. And St. Cloud got back in that football game, nearly won it. Lakeland needed a late interception to seal it. 26-21 was the final, but that was last week, the week before we were here. We saw Lakeland against Kathleen. Same type of story. Putting teams away has been an issue. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see after the first half of this football game how Lakeland comes out and responds. And the last thing I remember about Lakeland in 2009 when Plant came in here and took care of business. So, yeah, they got their work cut out for them to try to figure that out. 
They tried to toss it up that time to Raquan Southward and nothing doing. Let's send it down on the field. What you got, Brooke Bennett? Well, Drew, I know we've been talking a lot about all the things that have been going off the field here for the Dreadnoughts. And you look at Raheem Dumas and Jadarian Clark, how wonderful he's been and humble at this position. But they always say, as Coach, as Coach Castle says, you never know what you're going to expect of Dumas because he's just out there doing things, and, but he always really makes you surprised at the very end of the play. Yep. Yeah, I love Bill Castle, though. He talks about uh, how much fun uh, winning is. He said, you know, you really can't enjoy it very long. You have to wait till the season's over because Monday starts and the stress starts building again. But I, I love what he brings to the table, and he's done it for a long, long time. They hand off. Here's Dumas. Flag comes down. He's dragged down at the 45-yard line. Play made by Dominic Davis. Yeah, likely to be a holding call, but we'll see. And you, we, we were talking to Bill Castle before the game, and just to look at the guy, He's still got a lot of pep in his step. He's been doing, he's been here for 41 years, 36 as the head coach. And yep. look how fit the guy is. We're teasing him about his age. And if we could find out, we, we might tell you. But he said, you know what? You can call my wife. She doesn't even know. <laughs> so he's quite a character. I always enjoy spending time with him. Uh, coach Castle, his birthday tomorrow. And I'll let the cat out of the bag. He will turn 66 tomorrow. And I say that because I have never seen somebody at that age run around a football field like he does Illegal at shift. practice and on, on game offense. night. Penalty is Friday declined. Here at Bryan State. Third down. Flag. It'll be for Lakeland, I believe, third down, but Mark Castle is something else. Yeah, amazing to still have that energy level doing it as long as he did. And he talked about the difficulty of, of it being a different world now with the social media and all the things that are going on now. He said kids are just different. Good. Yeah, I'm here. And he is, as I said, going to be 66. He's got a 36-year-old body. A tremendous physical condition. He inspired you because you put that pizza down earlier. Oh, so. he, he really has. Dumas dumps it off, or at least tries to. Southward was checked, and Mark Raquan Southward, he is not going to go anywhere tonight without a major crowd around him at all times. Yeah, that is a good reason why. I mean, he's a big body guy, 6'2", 190 pounds. And uh, the Lakeland single game record, he owns 12 receptions, 238 yards. I think that's what originally put him on the map. But he's a very dangerous receiver. He works hard in the weight room. Uh, he's getting a lot stronger. He's a special player. Ian Bacon on the punt. Mike Fagan will take it at the seven. Fagan trying to find a seam, gets to the edge, and he's dragged down. 18-yard line, Stevenson was there to make the plays. The best players for Lakeland also play special teams. Let's flash it back now a couple years, Mark. October 23rd, 2009, you remember this night. Jared Hagens finds Javaris McCroy. Wow, what a special player he was. Now at Texas Tech, it's 6-0 Dreadnoughts. Will Bostic comes back for Osceola. And this would set up the only touchdown of the game for the Cowboys because Hagens would go deep to Javaris one more time. That's Florida State finding Texas Tech. And the final score, 26 to seven. Just another great night in Lakeland football history. Yeah, with McCroy, you just throw it as far as you can and you're not gonna uh, you know, throw it too far for him. He's gonna go and get it. So that, that was a lot of fun watching that kid play. Right now, TJ Simmons is dominating defensively for Lakeland. He looks like Sean Neely in black. Yeah, there's been a history of outstanding linebacker play here, and T.J. Simmons is certainly uh, following suit with the, the, the greats of the past, leading tackler, uh, just a really special football player. Second down, in motion. It's Hall, and they pitch it. And it's a nice play as Hall breaks loose. Reggie Hall looks to cut back. Flag comes down, and he gets to the 46. Yeah, it looks like we're going to get a maybe a block in the back there on number 20, but that's a tremendous run, open field run, finding space, cutting back across the field. By Reggie Hall, you can see nothing on the right side. He turns it back up the middle, has the speed, very wise, puts the ball on the outside hand to take it away from the defenders. You can see the block in the back. So an excellent play there. Unfortunately, the penalty is going to back it up, but that's a tremendous run. That was a pickup of 36 yards. Now the penalty will march it back 10, make it a 26 yard. Block in the back on the offense, 10 yard penalty. First snap. So first down for Osceola from the 41.
Williams trips, and this is going to be a loss. Got tied up with his offensive lineman, and that loses three. It looked like maybe number four there, Stephon McRae, stepped on his foot. It, it took him to the ground. He just tries to back out. Yeah, just got oh. his feet tangled up there. That big offensive lineman, number 78 there. And that sometimes happens. You know, you got to get those feet squared away, but you have an offensive lineman backing up to pull, and that can create some confusion sometimes. Osceola survived a scare last week. Rich community took him to overtime. Cowboys won 13-7 in round one. Now Williams looks downfield. That's the second time he's thrown it tonight, and keep in mind, 12 completions all year. Mark, you got a feeling tonight's going to be a different story. Yeah, and I think so. When you talk about this stage of the season in the playoffs here, you have to pull out all the stops and do whatever you can to, to advance. And uh, Coach Castle knew it was coming. He knew it, they'd see some, some shots over the top. They've been unable to connect on it. But what it does, it keeps your defense honest. You can't just stack up the box and stop that running game. You have to respect the pass as well. So third down and 13. This Osceola team playing with a lot more confidence than that of a year ago, for sure. Deron Williams will roll to his right. He wants to throw again. Under a big rush, gets away from it. He's got some room along the left side, now fires it incomplete. As he was looking for Dwight Fagan. Osceola being a lot more aggressive here tonight offensively. Yeah, great defensive pursuit there. Big number 78. Hayward Summerall had a shot at the quarterback. Wasn't able to get him on the ground, but you make the quarterback uncomfortable, make him move around, and have to throw on the run creates a lot of problems. Haywood Summerall <laughs> plays offense and defense. Mark tore his ACL last year, missed most of the season. But when he comes into the game, everybody takes notice. He is a run stuffer, and he's also a decent athlete who can get after the quarterback. Yeah, the thing that stands out about him, obviously, is his size. But for a guy that big, Coach Castle said this dude's got great agility, and that's very unusual to have both of those combinations, size and agility, but he does it. You can see, gets after the quarterback very well. Nice to see a kid like that coming back from an injury. Well, it's fourth down now, and a sideline warning just issued to Osceola. So Raquan Southward is back to receive this punt. Sean Congraves gets it away. Southward now picks it up at the 31. And Raquan gets it to the 36-yard line. So far, both teams kind of feeling each other out. Osceola has taken a few chances. Lakeland is also playing very conservative. That's what I love about these type of football games is, you know, there's a lot of pressure. You know, if you lose, you go home. So you, a lot of times you think you have to do something special or different than what you've done. Really, the bottom line is do what you do. Keep executing. Nobody has to... To, to be the player of the game, just everybody play together like you have all year. I just love this back and forth and this physical nature of play. So first down and 10. And the handoff is to Placidus. Taylor Placidus bounces it outside. Picks up 10. And now 13. First down at the 48. Yeah, it takes a little while sometimes to get in the offensive groove, especially when you're coming out in the playoffs here. Uh, fakes up the middle and just Placidus gets on the outside. And good blocking by that the wide receivers from Lakeland for a big first down gain. And you know, sometimes it takes you a little while to find your group. Let's see if they can get a drive started here. So first down. This time, Dumas wants southward. This is overthrown and nearly intercepted. Brandon Baker just needed a few more steps. And Southward said, hey, come on, that wasn't even close. Yeah, when Southward's double covered like that, it's a good idea by a quarterback just to throw it out there. And, you know, if he can somehow run under it, make the play, that's fine. You don't want to give up the interception. But, again, Dumas throws a great long ball, unfortunately, there to, into double coverage. So probably not a wise decision just throwing that one away. You get the sense, too, Mark, that these coaching staff, the people calling the plays, they're going to have to stay patient and really pick their spots. Yeah, they definitely have to be patient and, and take advantage of opportunities and try to play mistake-free football. Don't turn it over. Don't have penalties. Just keep doing what you've done all year to get you here. Ball on the ground, and it's loose. Osceola picks it up, and the Cowboys have recovered. A mishandled snap winds up into the arms of Deshaun Montgomery. First down 
Cowboys. And when you talk about mistakes. That's what you can't have. You can see the, the quarterback center exchange doesn't get executed. That's the, the most basic play in football. You have to make that play. Gets the ball on the ground. Osceola in excellent field position. We talked about how closely contested this game will be coming down to penalties and mistakes. That's a big one. So Raheem Dumas, a slow start for the Lakeland quarterback. And now Cowboys will try and take advantage. This is where if you're Osceola, you have to take advantage of this field position. You're not going to get a lot of opportunities perhaps all night if they can cash it in. And right up the gut, it's Stephon McCray racing to the end zone for the touchdown. We talked about Stephon McCray in the open. You look at the numbers, over eight yards a carry. Excellent blocking up front. And when he gets in the secondary, he's a difficult guy to get down. We talked about his speed. When he gets right here, he's going to outrun you to the end zone. Tremendous blocking up front. A great run by Stephon McCray and a good job capitalizing on that big turnover. So 33 yards on the touchdown. And now the extra point, Cristiano Nagaris to make this a 7-0 football game. And the Cowboys could not have asked for a better start. At the end of this first quarter, Osceola's come into enemy territory. And they've got a seven spot on the board. Yeah, this kid spends a lot of time studying film, so he knows exactly where the defenders are going to be, sets them up, plants that leg, gets back up the middle of the field, and gets the ball in the end zone. I love the way this kid runs, runs low to the ground. He's got great size, six foot, 185 pounds and he can flat out move. Well, he had an injury plagued 2010 mark, and Coach Nichols told everybody, told the media, look out for Stephon McCray in 2011, and boy, he wasn't kidding. Yeah, nobody knew this kid was gonna be as good as he's turned out to be, kind of one of those under the radar kids, and uh, really hadn't had the opportunity for, to fulfill his potential until this year, and you can see he's a pretty dynamic player. Well, Osceola, when you look at the top teams in Central Florida, this is no slouch that Lakeland is lining up against here tonight. Mainland number one, Deland number two, and right there, the Cowboys followed by Dr. Phillips. They're facing off with Plain tonight. Leesburg fifth, and the rest of the top 10, Olympia checking in at number 10. Yeah, you don't accidentally win eight games in a row and score over 38 points during that eight game win streak. So this is a really good football team. Not sure what that was. Would have been a big mess. Uh, guys off sides. Looks like they were trying to blue kick over to the to the right side. Just the timing was way off on it. And Mark, it must be playoff season because I mentioned that Dr. Phillips plant game. Right now, the Panthers lead. The Panthers plant leading Dr. Phillips 14 nothing. Wow, and they are yeah, all of a sudden scoring all these points. And just put up 50 points last week and. You know, Plant, another team that I don't think a lot of people expected were, was going to be a typical Plant season. And uh, they had the one loss, but uh, but they're certainly finding their groove. And I think this year, more than uh, past years, they started off relatively fast, which is unlike them. So they will push this back. Nagaris will give it a ride now from the 35. 7 0, Osceola, Drew Felios, Mark Royals, Brooke Bennett. Thrilled to be here on the Subway Restaurants Game of the Week. This is the regional semifinal. The winner advances to be within three wins of a state championship. As the Dreadnoughts come back with a return, Dietrich Gallishaw takes it across the 40 to the 42-yard line, and that's how we will end quarter number one. Seven-nothing is your score. The Cowboys have come here to play. We're back after this on the Subway Restaurants Game of the Week. Historic Bryant Stadium on a playoff Friday night here in Central Florida. The mecca of high school football. We love this place. <laughs> yeah, you like it because they feed us so well. I mean, the hospitality here is outstanding. And I tell you what, an Osceola team coming in here, you know, they haven't won in a long time. But getting that early score, it's a big deal when you start believing that you can win a football game. And for Lakeland, you would hope that you could, you know, keep them from getting to that point. They have the big turnover and give up the big run for the touchdown. So Lakeland needs to settle down and really find their groove. Well, when you look at strength of schedule, both of these teams <laughs> are no stranger to taking on top-notch competition. 
There you see opponents win loss percentage. Yeah, actually losing records this year. Last year, Osceola played juggernaut after juggernaut, but this season, not so much the case for either club. Well, I'll tell you, we're talking about Plant and the fact that they've played eight playoff mm. teams. I think that's a maximum amount, and that really gets him ready uh, for this type of situation into the playoff. Dumas fires to Gallishaw. He takes a shot at the 40. He's out of bounds right there. And James Farley came up from behind him and knocked him out of bounds, but not before he picked up a first down. Yeah, that's a great job as a quarterback rolling out against your body and then squaring your shoulders. That's what you're taught to do is set your feet and deliver the ball to a wide open receiver. So a nice job moving the ball on first down. And again, important for Lakeland to respond after giving up that uh, big turnover and touchdown. I think it's important for Gallishaw to make his presence felt also, Mark, because they got to get someone else to respect the other side of the field and get the attention away from Raquan Southwark. First down and 10, and it's Cunningham. Forrest Cunningham, his first carry. He picks up five yards. Let's send it down on the field. Brooke Bennett, couple special guests down there. Drew, I'm surrounded by celebrities, and of course, they're no stranger to dreadnought playoff atmosphere. Mike Pouncey, who we saw yesterday play on Thanksgiving, and out here to support the dreadnoughts. We were just talking about the turf. How do you think Bryant Stadium is looking? Well, it's looking great, man. You know, they've done a lot to improve this field, and it's just great, man. The fans are still great. I, I miss it to death, man. It's nothing like being in high school. Let me really talk about that. We were talking about the history with Coach Castle and talking about his birthday and the celebration tomorrow. Just the, the community support that you have here in Lakeland. Oh, we love it, man. Lakeland's done so much for us, and the least we can do is give back, man. man. This, this team and this, this whole you know, city's been so great to us, man. We just love it, and we cherish it and love being here every moment. We know that they continue to support you, and of course, your brother Marquise, who will be playing on Sunday. And of course, Ahmad Black, we saw you a couple weeks out here, only a short trip because you're still here locally in Tampa. This team this year that we've seen the Dreadnoughts really come together. Coach Castle talks a lot about them. Is that just the tradition that this team is all about, this area? Definitely, definitely. Uh, you know, we do a lot of uh, team things at practice and stuff that, that draws closer together together and you know of course they go to school together so uh you know coach castle makes sure that they're, they're close together and like a close-knit family well i know that the community everybody appreciates everybody's support and we continue to wish you guys the best of luck drew we're going to send it back to you all right brooke two guys that are gone but certainly not forgotten they're still talking about that run from 2004 to 2006 both of those guys such a part of that three state championships in that year. That was the heart and soul of the Pouncey era. That's pretty impressive. I, I don't know if uh, you'll be able to talk about that from any other school ever. I mean, that, that, that was an impressive run. He talked about high school. There's really nothing like playing high school football. Although I will say this, on, on Monday mornings when he walks in and the Dolphins often and picks up his paycheck, probably not too bad either. No. Southward turns it up left, flat down. He steps out near the 10 yard line. Both of these teams getting a little bit chippy after the plays, but there's a flag at the 22. Yeah, that's going to come back. I, I think that the, the hold is going to be on number 86 there uh, on the edge. That's Ian it's Bacon, a, by the way. Ian Bacon just gets out on, on, on the sideline here. Mm. And, you know, you can make a case for it not being holding, but whenever the defender goes to the ground like that, the officials, for whatever reason, always call it. And an unsportsmanlike after that, Mark. And this could send Lakeland out of field goal range. Yeah, that may be a little sideline. Uh, Coach is not being happy with that call uh, for the unsportsmanlike conduct, but you've got to keep your wits about you, and sometimes the calls are not going to go your way, and that's probably what he was protesting right there, maybe questioning the holding call because the defender went to the ground, and you see it on all levels. I, I... Holding on the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike on the offense, 15 yards, second down. We talked about mistakes, and that's a big one. You're driving, getting back into the football game. You have a chance to, to get points, and now you're losing 25 yards of field position based oh. on a couple of mistakes. I mean, that would just kill drives. Mark, they push this back to the 47-yard line. they got to get to the 19 for a first down, and it's second down right now. Yeah, not a lot of play calls for offensive coordinators to try to decide how to pick up a mile. Here's Dumas. They'll look to Gallishaw. Dietrich Gallishaw makes the cut up to the 40, gets some of that yardage back. And he's stopped there by C.J. Butler. 
Yeah, just get a receiver screen out there. Try to get one of your good offensive players, Deidre Galishaw, in space. Let him make a play. Osceola doing a good job pursuing to the football and, and not giving up a huge amount of yardage. So, so far, Galishaw with three big catches. Let's see how much Dumas spreads the football around here tonight. Now you got to think right now, you're at the 40 yard line. You try to pick up 10 yards or so and you give yourself a chance for a field goal or take a shot down the field. Dumas, right side, got a man open. It's southward. And he gets to the 25 yard line. So he's six yards shy of a first down, but Mark, I think they'll take it. Yeah, you definitely want to get the ball in this kid's hand as often as possible just to roll out. Dumas doing a tremendous job of throwing the ball accurately on the run. Good defensive play there by number 12, C.J. Butler, of, of not giving up the first down and Lakeland with the first decision offensively of the game. Did not get the best spot. It'll be fourth down and six, but I think Lakeland is going to take their chances here. Dumas is on the field. And Osceola immediately caused timeout. But when you look at Raheem Dumas operate this offense, what a story. Did not know, Mark, that he was going to play quarterback until just a day before the Dreadnought's very first game. And the conversation kind of went something like this. Coach Castle looked at Dumas and said, Raheem, you're playing quarterback. And he looked at his coach and said, are you serious? Yeah, and ultimately, I think that's the position he would like to play. But before the kickoff classic, you get the word, you're our quarterback. It's like, OK, I got to shift gears into my whole mentality. And uh, he's done a good job. I think he's progressed each week. And he's certainly capable. He's athletic enough to, to run that position. But you'd certainly like to have an off season to prepare and get yourself ready for that position. But the combination of him and Southward, you see Raquan right there, right next to him. Number nine went to his quarterback and said, listen, Raheem, calm down. It's as simple as this. Anytime you get into trouble, just throw the football to me. I'll take care of the rest. And what receiver doesn't say that across the league at any level? They're always open. Throw the ball to me, but you're right. That's a that's a special receiver right there. Not a bad option if you get in trouble to sling it out there to him. There's Southward. Quiet so far. We're fourth down and six. Dumas looking for him. Now unloads. Galishaw makes the catch. He's got a Lakeland first down at the 16-yard line. That's a great job by the receivers of pushing the ball up the field, appearing to go on a go route. The quarterback does the pump fake. Derek Galishaw comes back for the ball. Gets it. That's a tremendous job by that offense of overcoming 25 yards of penalties on two downs to get themselves in scoring position. Hats off to them. Great job. This Lakeland crowd's been a little bit subdued so far in this game. The score here would give them something to cheer about. Cunningham this time takes the handoff, tries to spin freeze, gang tackle at the 17. Forrest Cunningham, Mark, I know you love oh, number 22. What a, what, yeah, he's uh, one of the undersized kids at 5'6", 170 pounds, but when you're still voted by your teammates as super knot, they call him, they had this deal during the offseason, agility drills, weight training, long jump, squat, bench, you name it. And this kid came out on top of all those different events, and he well earned is the super knot of this Lakeland football team. Now second down. No gain on the last play. The pitch to Southward. Raquan Southward inside the 10 and down to the eight yard line. And now you hear the bells ringing here at Bryant Stadium. I'll tell you what, man, Ra Raquan Southward, when he runs, is like poetry. This guy, he, he looks like he's not moving very fast, but he's getting up the field and you can just see on that last run, he's scanning the field, great vision to find an opening, and then he's got this tremendous burst and speed to get through it. Love what I've seen early out of this football player. He's awesome. Yeah, he says, I'm not 100% on Miami. A lot of the media, newspapers, and radio saying he is a Miami commit, but he said that is not a done deal just yet. Well, if he says no to them, there's Florida, Florida State, and Ohio State waiting for that commitment. Dumas inside the five now. Dreadnought's knocking on the door. And it will be first down and goal for Lakeland. And this is Lakeland football with a big offensive line that they feel really good about. They just keep pounding on you. They like to run it. Just keep handing it off. Keep moving the chains. 
may not show up in the first half, but when you get into the third and fourth quarter, that they hope that they can wear you down by just pounding the ball at you. Very impressive drive. Keep an eye on the left side of that line with Goodman. As they'll pound it with Cunningham. He'll go right and waltz into the end zone for the Lakeland touchdown. That gets the fans up a little bit. It was kind of quiet here, but that's a tremendous drive. It's hard enough to score points anyway, but they were able to overcome the penalty yards and the mistakes that they made to drive it down the field and answer the Osceola touchdown. Great vision there by number 22, Forrest Cunningham, to kick it out to the right side there and get it in the end zone for a touchdown. A very, very impressive drive by Lakeland. So Caleb Huff on for the extra point. The kick is up and good, and we've got a tie game. Eighth rushing TD of the season for number 22, Forrest Cunningham. And we have reached the water break here midway through the second quarter. So Osceola and Lakeland, this is what playoff football is all about. Forrest Cunningham, all tied at seven. Seven seven on a perfect November night of football here at Bryant Stadium. Drew Felios, Mark Royals, and an excited atmosphere here. And Mark, I'm sure this morning the treadmill felt like it always did after that <laughs> Thanksgiving feast you had yesterday. Yeah, I don't know what it is, Drew. I don't know if you're the same, but I promised myself every year, don't go back for the seconds, don't go back for the thirds, and I do it every single year. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to eat again ever. And two hours later, I was hungry again. I got a real problem. So ball put in the air, Caleb Huff, and this will be a touchback. And you saw on that last drive, Mark, the ground game of Lakeland really taken over. It has pretty much the past three weeks. You look at what the Dreadnoughts have done against Ridge. They really turned it on 350 yards on the ground. Then against Kathleen on the game of the week, nearly 300. And in round one of the postseason, over 300. He, look at the average, over five a clip. Yeah, and I think that's really what Lakeland's all about. And talking to Coach Castle, he said that his football team is just a, a, a team of, he didn't say misfits, but a bunch of guys that, you know, nothing special, nothing great about any of them, but they all play well together. And that's a sign. When you run the ball effectively like that, that's a group of guys getting their job done. So Karan Williams under center will hand it off. Going left is Dwight Fagan. Fagan turning it up field, and he's got a pickup of seven up to the 27-yard line. Stopped there by Simmons, who has been active in this first half. And if you're able to run the football like both of these teams can, as you look at Fagan's numbers on the air, eight, over eight yards a rush, that's pretty effective. But that, that's kind of you can dictate to teams what you do. Just run it down their throat and, and see if they can stop you. But you've got you've to be able to, to do what you do. And that's what both of these teams are the most effective at. Second down and three. Oh. McRae's not going to get anything. Stephon McRae may have lost a yard as flags come down. It looked like a motion penalty there. Let's see what the officials saw. And it will be a legal motion. Good call, Mark. The kind of thing that kills you, though. You know, those little five-yard penalties. You have a great first down run. You're second in a couple of yards. You go up and you give away five yards, creates a down and distance uh, problem. Illegal motion on the offense, five yard penalty, replay second down. So Osceola will have it second down now in eight. They'll spot it at the 22. Williams snowed in. Well, I'll tell you what, T.J. Simmons flying around the field. He's only a junior also. He is going to get better and better. Well, that's a tremendous play by number two right there. You see he sees an opening and a gap and gets up the field and makes a tremendous play in the backfield. Only a junior. You can imagine that schools are going to come knocking on that door, but that's a Lakeland tradition here, linebacker play. This kid at six foot, 220 pounds, and he's got a tremendous amount of quickness and burst and strength as a young player. 
Well, I say that because Randy Hampton, the defensive lineman that we profiled in the Open's a junior, Simmons a junior. You also got Jalen Stevenson, the sack leader's a junior. Heck, next year, are you kidding me? Third down and 10 after the loss of a couple. And taken down one more time. Lakeland's defense starting to take over. And that was Randy Hampton, a senior. Five foot 11, undersized, but not with heart. Yeah, and you watch Randy Hampton right there. He grabs the quarterback and the running back at the same time and makes the play. That's a great job of recognizing where the football is. Sometimes you don't know with a little trickery on the offensive side, but that's a great job there of recognition and getting the quarterback on the ground. Good, def good defensive stand. Hampton is a senior. I believe I said he was a junior. So he is playing in his final games here. As the Lakeland Dreadnought is the punt away, and it takes a Osceola bounce down to the 40. See where they spot that. Should be the 45-yard line. Yeah, I think that's where it was originally touched, so it'll come back to the 45-yard line. And uh, Lakeland, after giving up the touchdown, a nice job answering, and then their defense doing the same thing, going out and getting the big stop and putting their offense in tremendous field position. Uh, this Dreadnought's team, interesting, Mark, because Coach Castle said last year my team had big names. But we didn't necessarily play as big, especially in that the biggest moment against Plant. He references that game and you just see the look of disgust, disappointed with how his team played that night. Still a great season last year on the field. This team, not the big names, but they just seem to play a little bit better. Yeah, and that normally happens a lot of times when you don't have the star power. Everybody kind of accepts their role and does what they're supposed to do. And he said that's exactly what this team's all about. Dumas right up the middle. Raheem Dumas. Just following his blockers. Now will hesitate and get out of bounds at the 27. That's a 29-yard pickup for Dumas. Yeah, this might be a, a guy that didn't know he's going to play quarterback until the last second, but you, you can't teach the athletic ability this kid has. Tremendous athlete in space right there. He's strong enough to break tackles, good vision to get the ball out, outside, let his receivers go down the field and create blocks for him. That's a, just a tremendous athletic play by your quarterback. Mark, he is about as spiritual as you can get to. He told me, he said, Drew, I pray about 10 times a game. I constantly, because I need it to get me through, he's still trying to believe he can shine at that position. Well, I'll tell you what, that's not a bad option. If you, uh, There's a lot of other things you could do. Prayer's probably not a bad idea. Placidus now is handed it. He picks up five yards. Let's send it down on the field. Brooke Bennett, this Lakeland team, pretty tight-knit group. Yeah, and I was listening to you and Mark talk about that. And Coach Castle really says over the summer they went to the camp, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and he saw that's really where this team started to bond. And it's not always about the big names, Drew. When you're on this field, it's about coming together as a group and as a team. And I think what we can see down here tonight is Mark's touch offensively and defensively. That's what's exactly happening with the Dreadnoughts. We've got more on that in just a second. Coach Castle loves the character of this team. Second down and five. And this time it's Southward, left side. Raquan Southward stays on his feet, hurdles the tackler, gets it inside the 10, and it's another Lakeland first down. Ra Raquan Southward right there, just a, a, an effort run. He, you know, he gets banged around, gets pulled down by his jersey, but a tremendous effort by your receiver. Just a handoff on the edge. You can see he's getting bounced around, pulled by the jersey. You can see hopping over people, turning his shoulders up the field, a tremendous run. And, and we talked about these young undersized players and, and uh, the effort that they give. If you're a young uh, undersized kid, you have to work harder to get on the football field. So you get 11 of those guys on the field, and you do things like FCA bonding things, and they come together as a team, man. It's hard to stop. Placidus now looking for a hole, runs into a wall. That wall's named Dominic Davis. There is a flag on the play. And it's going to be a hold on Lakeland. Mark, back to the team chemistry thing and the big names. I cannot stand it when local media people say the Bucks don't spend money for big names. That's not the formula for winning teams, as the Rays have proven in all the sports. It's chemistry within a football team. Well, I, something Tony Dungy said a long time ago in the locker room um, to our team when I was a player there, he said, holding on the offense, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first and goal. He said, we may not always have the best players on the football field, 
but we will have the best team that works together as a team. And that's really to, to Lakeland's point. He's got a lot, of, a lot of guys that do things well, but they all buy into their role. That's really important. We've seen uh, the Terrell Owens of the world and what they can do, the superstar guys who don't buy into it can create problems. Yep. Dumas now under a rush, gets it away, and it's caught. Eric Andre, the third option at tight end, scores a Lakeland touchdown. That's a tremendous run by Eric Andre. And look at your quarterback in Dumas. He's off balance, but he still has a wherewithal to get the ball into his receiver's hands. And watch the effort right here, almost a horse collar tackle, but he has the power and the strength and the want to to get it in the end zone. Tremendous run after the catch. It is not often Eric Andre touches the football. You can tell he wanted to make the most of his opportunity as Huff boots it through 14-7. Andre has put the Lakeland Dreadnoughts into the lead for the first time tonight. Yeah, the 14th touchdown pass of the season, but this is an excellent job of feeling pressure in your face, turning your shoulders, delivering the ball. And watch the effort right here. Breaks the tackle, turns it back up the field. He's not going to be denied. And as you said, Drew, you have limited opportunities to touch a football. When you get it in your hands, you want to make something happen. He certainly takes advantage of his opportunity there. Mark, he ran right through the tackle of James Farley. And Farley is a lockdown player in the secondary who can come up and pop you. But Eric Andre was not going to be denied in those are the types of plays when we talk about playing as a team. It's role players like that, hearing their number called and then stepping up and making it happen. You accept your role, and when your number is called, you take advantage of the opportunity. That kid was not going to be denied there. Just a tremendous effort play, breaking tackles. And you know what, Lakeland at this point has seemed to have settled into their game right now, and they're really imposing their will on Osceola after giving up that first touchdown. Drive four plays, 55 yards. Yeah, you just get a sense, Mark, that this Lakeland team, with all the stuff that's gone on off the field, with the players that were going to transfer here to Lakeland, but eventually ruled ineligible by the FHSA, this team is playing like they have no pressure on them whatsoever. And it tells you a lot about this Lakeland program, because if there was something to be uncovered, as, as scrutinized as they were, it probably would have been uncovered. And they came out squeaky clean, so my hat's off to this program. Here come the Cowboys. Wow, up to the 16-yard line, a big hit. Randy Hampton was not going to let Devontae Small go anywhere. Lakeland's defense tonight making their presence felt. Yeah, Randy Hampton early in the football game. And you can see T.J. Simmons. We've talked about him all night in his physical play. But they are getting after this Osceola offense, bringing pressure from all angles. Again, T.J. Simmons doing a tremendous job. Randy Hampton and, and the boys are really bringing it. Kind of like they don't want to be denied tonight. They really are imposing their will. Only five foot 11, 180 pounds. Doesn't always tell the story, man. You can't measure the size of the heart and the want to, and they've got it tonight. He plays a lot bigger, doesn't he? First down and 10 from the 16. Try and hand it off up the gut. And Lakeland's defense is strong up the middle. I'll tell you what, T.J. Simmons continues to wreak havoc. Stephon McRae, the ball carrier. T.J. Simmons has been unbelievable. Every time there's a play, this kid's right in the middle making it. And aggressively, and physical nature. Watch this. He just brings it up the middle, man. He is not going to be denied. This kid's something else. He's only a junior, right? Wow. That's senior year. <laughs> the college scouts, <laughs> they're coming here to see number two. You can believe that. Second down and 10. Karan Williams and Osceola handing it off. This time it's Devontae Small, and he gets it up to the 18-yard line. So still a long way to go before a first down. Third down and seven coming up. Yeah, T.J. Simmons didn't make the play there, but if you could have seen the, the running back trying to block him in the hit that he took as, as T.J. Simmons was pursuing the ball carrier, I mean, this guy is bringing the wood. Watch this. Oh, wow. <laughs> he didn't make the play, but I guarantee the next guy that comes up to try to block him is going to think twice. This guy is quite a player. That's Lakeland football. Attitude all over the place. Third down seven. This time it's McCray. Ball comes out, and Lakeland looks like they had it, and they may have jumped on it with the second opportunity. Let's see. 
It is Dreadnoughts football. That's just a defender putting his hand right on the football and stripping it out as he's going to make the tackle. And the ball's on the ground again in Lakeland in excellent position. Again, imposing their will. It's a straight handoff up the middle. You can see the ball is hit with the helmet in the hand. It's on the ground. The scrum for the football and Lakeland's able to come up with it. And that's exactly what you do when you're imposing your will, offensively driving the ball down and getting points. But on the defensive side, don't think for a second that doesn't get those guys inspired. T.J. Simmons and crew are playing an outstanding football game. Well, it was Trey Dempsey right there, number 31, who came up with the football again. Another role player shining when the spotlight was on him. And I believe Randy Hampton forced that fumble. The instincts of Dempsey came up with it. So first down and 10 from the 30, a short field for Lakeland to work with. It's Hampton. He's loving life right now. Dumas now rolling left, firing and caught. Raquan southward, 12-yard line, first down Dreadnoughts. Raquan Southward doing a tremendous job of going up and making a play. He's well covered. Dumas throws the ball in a perfect spot. Either his receiver's going to make the play or it's going to go out of bounds. But uh, Southward showing some good vertical to get up and make a play there. Tremendous catch. So a timeout on the field with only six seconds to go in this first half. Lakeland could be down to their final play here. If the Dreadnoughts win tonight, it is on to the regional final take a look at the road for lakeland so far a win over st cloud tonight against osceola and then they've got the winner of tampa bay tech and gaither and for for either tampa bay tech or gaither right now the cowboys of gaither lead 10 to 7. that is going to be a a big time gut check next week if they have to take on really lakeland or osceola because tbt and gaither both great years but not used to this level of competition they're not used to the level of competition and that'll be a monumental effort for one of those two teams to knock off uh, either lakeland or osceola as you mentioned so if you're lakeland here you've got six seconds the last thing you want to do is put yourself in a situation not to at least attempt a field goal to get some points before you go into the halftime so if they're going to run a play here uh, look for a ball to be in the end zone it's either caught or incomplete where you still have a chance to get your field goal team out so six seconds to go and they'll try and fire it up raquan southward go get it touchdown that's an unbelievable pass by raheem dumas Throw it out there and let your best receiver run under it. Take a shot. If it's incomplete, you still have a chance to go out and kick a field goal, but it's a perfectly thrown pass by Dumas. And Southwood runs under it for the touchdown. And Mark, it would have been the final play of the half. If this is incomplete, the Dreadnoughts go off with nothing. Perfectly thrown pass. Not bad coverage by number six, Brandon Baker, but you can't defend a ball that's thrown that perfectly. Great job by Lakely getting that touchdown before the half. Extra point is no good by Huff, but still, it's a win for Lakeland on this to end the half. Raquan Southward, if you have him as your receiver, just throw it to the corner of the end zone. You know he's going to be there. Perfectly thrown ball. Great job by Lakeland. Let's send it down on the field to Brooke Bennett with Lakeland coach Bill Castle. Coach Castle, I know you couldn't be happier right now with that last play. Defensively, just lighting up the field down here, and then you go into the locker room at the half with that final touchdown. Oh, that's huge for us, but we, we also realize that uh, Kissimmee's got a heck of a ball club, and they're, they're explosive. They've been scoring a lot of points, so we can't. it's not no time to relax. Well, we know you've got a lot to do in the locker room to play these next two quarters. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. All right, Bill Castle. <laughs> Run into the <laughs> locker room, I'm telling you, like he's 30 years old. Yeah, it's, uh, it's impressive, but they're going to have to go in at halftime and think about what's happened. They haven't been able to close teams out, so they'll have that conversation. Let's see if they can close it out when they come out here in the second half. So Lakeland leads Osceola as we head to halftime. Your score, 20 to 7. Tonight's telecast brought to you by Subway Restaurants. You can come into your local Subway for breakfast until the end of the month. It's buy one, get one on a breakfast sandwich. Good from 7 to 9 a.m. every day. Subway, eat fresh. The Dreadnoughts lead by 13. We hope you're enjoying our Subway Restaurants Game of the Week, our halftime show. 
Well, the Lakeland Dreadnoughts go on a late run at the end of the half, and they go into the locker room with a 20-7 lead over the Osceola Cowboys as we're just minutes away from starting half number two. But Osceola had some chances, able to force the turnover, and Deshaun Montgomery falls on it. The Cowboys were in business. Then Stephon McRae, 33 yards out, able to find the hole. And it was 7-0 after the extra point. Osceola on top. But Lakeland really settled down, went down the field for us. Cunningham finds this seam, gets the dreadnoughts on the board. It was 7-7. Then this a huge play right here is Eric Andre, the tight end, a backup, forces his way across the goal line. And it was 14 to seven. And then a big play just before the half a turnover. Stefan McRae puts it on the carpet. Lakeland able to come up with it. And then the big play just before the end of the half. The final play from scrimmage, it's a touchdown. Raquan Southward squeezes the football. Raheem Dumas delivered it perfectly. And there is your story, Mark. One turnover apiece, time of possession, pretty much equal as well. Yeah, and the thing that stands out, you look at the passing yards, uh, Lakeland 128 and Osceola zero. You have to have some sort of balance on your offense, and that's exactly what Lakeland has done. The defense has stepped up, prevented Osceola from rushing the football, and they can't move it through the air. There you have the 20-7 to deficit. Yep. Lakeland pretty much owned that second quarter as well. So 20-7, to here come the Dreadnoughts, and when we come back, we will start the second half on the Subway Restaurants Game of the Week. With a 20-0, 20-7 lead, rather, on the Subway Restaurants Game of the Week, tonight's telecast brought to you by Subway Restaurants. Buy one, get one on a six-inch breakfast sandwich throughout the month of November. Good from 7 to 9 a.m. every day. Subway, eat fresh. As we take a look at some games around the area that we're following along with this contest, how about Mainland 14-13 over Winter Haven. Winter Haven, another team like Lakeland, playing perfect football. And you got Berkeley Prep over Fort Meade. That was a major hurdle mark for the Buccaneers. Fort Meade has spelled doom for Berkeley in the past, but so far, not tonight. Yeah, I got a special running back there, that Nelson Aguilar. He's something else. We had him this year and uh, off to a good start there in that game. Done. I have a feeling Berkeley's going to find themselves in Orlando in a couple weeks. Only two weeks away. Next week, if Berkeley advances, will be the, the third round. And looking at this football game, if you're Lakeland, you go in last week up 26 to nothing at halftime and hanging on at the end to win that 26 to 21. I'm sure, that conversation was had. Bill Castle probably told his team, listen, this Osceola team. Over the last eight game win streak, has been averaging over 38 points a game, so they can still put up some points in a hurry. So it'll be interesting to see how they come out and if they're able to close this one out. Yep. So the Lakeland Dreadnoughts, impressive in the first half, started a little bit slow, but they have definitely put the foot on the gas pedal. 25 playoff appearances for this Lakeland program. Bill Castle has been along for the ride for about every single one. I mentioned some of those alumni, Mark. We talked about Scooter Hagens at Florida State, Javaris McCroy at Texas Tech. Also got to mention Ben McCroy, Coach Castle very proud of, a kick returner at Texas Tech, and Stuart Butler, the running back who set all the records last year for a single season for the Dreadnoughts, right now doing good things at Marshall. Yeah, Bill Castle, he's quick to, to you know, share the, the wealth around here with his assistant coaches and the fact that he's had a great group of assistant coaches for an extended period of time, hence the fact that they win every single year. You know, it starts right there, that coaching staff, having continuity within that. Uh, he, he gives a lot of the credit to that, to that bunch. So here's the kickoff. Cristiano Nagaris to do the honors. It's a short kick. Osceola wants to keep it out of the hands of Raquan Southward. It winds up in Dietrich Galishaw's hands, and that's not much better. It's like Victor Poison up to the 46-yard line. That's where Lakeland will start. And, Mark, it's time now to announce our Bright House Sports Network Athletes of the Week. There you see some of the best from the area in all different sports. I want to note, too, number one, James Few from Plant High School, just a tremendous student, a tremendous kid. And Brittany Estes, the volleyball star from Eastlake, 
had an allergic reaction in the 8A championship, and she put on a show, not 100%. Yeah, and you had, you had the uh, pleasure of calling some volleyball, and it's uh, pretty impressive what those young women are, are able to do. It's a fun sport to watch. And that's off to Brittany, and congratulations to the Eastlake volleyball team. Second straight state championship as Southward is taken down in the backfield. That's a loss of two, and it'll be second and 12. Yeah, and if Osceola's going to get themselves back in this football game, they're going to have to step it up on the defensive side. That's what kind of turned the tide of the game. Lakeland, their defense really took control of this football game. Osceola has to set the tone here on this opening drive, prevent Lakeland from moving the ball and scoring any points, get it back for their offense, giving them a chance to get back in the flow of the game. Lakeland got a very good spot on that last play, and it just turns out being no gain. Ron Southward, bottom of your screen. Dumas stumbles out of the huddle. Now fires it up in the air. Southward collides, and there's the flat. Yeah, that's an easy call. Dumas throws that ball kind of up in the air for grabs, really. And, and the defender. Dominic Davis has his back to the ball. You can see right there, if you don't turn around to find the ball, you're going to get called all the time. That's an easy call. Collides with the receiver, knocks him over before the ball gets there, pass interference. Mark, that's Brandon Baker, the young man who is the cousin. On the defense, automatic first down, 15 yards. The cousin of former Osceola star Shaquille Bell, but he had the big task tonight, and lately, the last few minutes, he hasn't been able to keep Southwood in check very well. Yeah, that, that's tough uh, duty for anybody. This kid's really something else. And he's got great size. That's a that's a matchup nightmare. Come on, so it'll be first down for Lakeland after the 15-yard penalty. 39-yard line. Hand it to the fullback. It's Cunningham. Forrest Cunningham. Leaping tacklers. First down. He picks up 12. First down, Lakeland. Hey, talk about a kid that's 5'6 and 170 pounds as he gets up a little gingerly on his leg there, but you can barely see the guy in the midst of all those bigger players. But look at the vision there, knocking his own offensive lineman out of the way. He takes a shot on his leg uh, when he makes it, when he's tackled. But this kid is tough <laughs> as nails. Runs it up in the middle very well. And just a little spark plug for that offense. He lost his mouthpiece there. You saw him locate it at the 25, pick it up, put it right back in his mouth. He's ready to go. First down now. Placidus dragged down. Nice play. Akeem Francis. We haven't called his name mark. This is the leader of the Cowboys defense. He finally makes a big play. Yeah, does a good job of finding uh, a gap there and shooting through to bring that the defender. He's the heart and soul of that defense. Uh, you know, he's one of the leaders, and they expect him to lead by example. That's a pretty good example there. Nice play. So after the two-yard loss, second down and 12. Dumas fires southward. Nice tackle in the open field as Brandon Baker comes up to make that stop, Mark. I mentioned on the last play, Hakeem Francis, and I talked about the allergic reaction Brittany Estes had. Mark, last week against Ridge Community in that first round of the playoffs, Francis also had an allergic reaction. He's allergic to garlic. The pregame meal was spaghetti and marinara sauce. Second half, he starts breaking down, having that reaction. They had to take him to the hospital. He turned out OK, of course. Well, that's dangerous, man. You have to know what you're allergic to and be careful about what you're putting in your body. And uh, that's, uh, that's an unfortunate situation. That's on him, though. You know, if you're having a meal, you got to know what's in it. If you're allergic to garlic, uh, you got to stay clear of it. I've had similar reactions, but that's only to my cooking. <laughs> I've never had your cookie, but I believe that. <laughs> well, so far, Raquan Southward, he started slow mark, but I'll tell you what, number nine has found his rhythm. Yeah, he's a dynamic player, and you, you don't want to get the ball in his hands as much as you possibly can. You see him go up high for a, a ball that only he's going to catch, and then the speed to run under this ball to get the touchdown before the half. Uh, but that's your playmaker. Get it to him as much as you can. I mean, I'll tell you what, Javaris McCroy, 
could stretch the field. But Mark, I don't know if he was as dangerous all around as Southwood has been tonight. Yeah, McCroy, I think, was uh, just a speed guy. And, and Southwood, when you look at him running all around the field, he, he cuts and shifts and uh, very cagey running. So I think he brings a lot a lot to the table uh, running the football, uh, has the speed too. But when he gets the ball in his hands, running great vision and moves around very well. So third down for the Dreadnoughts. Lakeland, one of four tonight. Third down conversion. Southwards in motion. Dumas rolling right, looking for him. And this one's low and complete. Yeah, that's on the quarterback there. Southwood runs a good route and gets some separation from the defender, and Dumas knows he undershot that one. But he had, when he came out of the break, I think he was a little slow delivering the football to him. And then when he finally got it to him, just a little bit underthrown. Looks like the Dreadnoughts want to go for it here. I was watching their field goal kicker before the game, and that's probably about his range right here. And they're only squeaking him through from about 40, 45 yards. So Lakeland choosing to take the shot here on fourth down to pick up the first down. Spotted at the 27. He's got to get to the 18. One for one tonight on fourth downs for Lakeland. Fake it. Now screen. Southward. Won't get the first down. He's taken down about five yards shy by Dominique Davis. And Osceola will take over. Yeah, Southwood losing his footing there when he got the ball in his hands. He really exploded out of his break. And then when he went to make his cut, lost his footing and slipped down. And big stop there for Osceola. So this is a chance for the Cowboys. They halt the Lakeland momentum for now. But Mark Osceola needs to make something happen here. Yeah, they're down by 13. They don't really have to panic, abandon their game plan. They're running football team. They really start have to start executing, mixing it up a little bit, get a little momentum. Momentum's a big deal, and they were out of sync for most of the first half. This kind of a little reverse trap play, and busting out of it is Reggie Hall. Reggie Hall all the way down to the 30-yard line, and he's knocked out. They'll mark it at the 28. That's a 48-yard gain on first down, and finally life for the Cowboys. Yeah, Trey Dempsey able to drag him down on the sideline, but this is a little misdirection play, and it's great blocking up front. Look at the seam right here. He busts through it, nothing but daylight. He's able to get tracked down and, and dragged down before he gets in the end zone. But again, if you're Osceola, no need to panic. You, you're averaging over 38 on, points a game in the last eight games that you've won. So plenty of time to go in the second half. Just stick to your game plan. There you saw the midline option at its best. Karan Williams with new life. It's McCray now, Stephon McCray. And he is met in the hole hard. Logan Cochran is right there waiting for him, number 21. Yeah, and let's not forget, only down by 13 points, that missed extra point. They're able to get in here and get a touchdown and kick the extra point, only down by six at that point. And we got us a football game. Brown now starting to come alive on the home side. They want their dreadnoughts to dig in here. Second and seven. Williams will pitch it. It's Dwight Fagan looking to make the cut. But Randy Hampton is not going to let him go anywhere. That's a loss of three. Now we talked about Randy Hampton in the open, and he was going to have to create the edge to turn the running backs back to the flow of the game. And he does an excellent job right there of not letting the running back get outside of him. As you look at his numbers on the year, it's an excellent job of being disciplined and doing your job. I love his game. Third down now, 10. Williams buying time for himself. Now heaves it out there, and it's incomplete. Boy, Daquan Harrison had separated. If the throw would have been a little bit higher, that would have been six. Yeah, that's a missed opportunity. A good job by our quarterback of getting outside the pocket and buying some time. You can see right there, he tried to throw across his body and didn't get his shoulders around and get his feet set, but he had a wide open Daquan Harrison across the middle missed a big opportunity there for points. 
Fourth down, and guess what? The Cowboys are going for it. Under pressure, they set up the screen. McCray is not going to get the first down. And guess who makes the tackle? It's not Hampton. He was in the vicinity. Instead, Trey Three, the sophomore linebacker, comes up huge. And that's a great play right there with this little receiver screen. If he doesn't make the play, that's likely going to be a first down. <clears throat> You see, let the defenders come in, swing it out to your running back, and look at the space out there. If he doesn't make this play, he's running up the field uh, for a first down. So a great job of getting that player on the ground by Trey Three. Excellent job. So three, one of the Lakeland defenders starting to thrive in that 4-4 defense. Here's Placidas. Oh, he's going to be wrestled down. James Farley who did not look good on that touchdown by Lakeland that Eric Andre scored. Farley says, hey, I am not letting anybody run over me anymore tonight. Yeah, and you sort of sense that Osceola, by the big run offensively, has got a little bit more pep in their step right now. They're really bringing it on the defensive side, bringing a lot of pressure, a lot of attitude right here. Excellent opportunity to force Lakeland to punt the football and get field position to get their offense back on the field. You can tell no panic right now on this Cowboys side. Second down, Dumas fires it out there. Southward, nearly intercepted. Oh, I'll tell you what, Brandon Baker had it right in his mitts, but it falls incomplete. Let's send it down on the field. Brooke Bennett, what have you got? Drew, well, like you just said, there is no panic over here. The, the sidelines here, the players are into this, talking to each other, being very confident. The fans are into this. We saw Reggie Hall break through Drew. If you look at the size of that guy, oh, my gosh, Coach Nichols says, you know, he takes hits on this field, and sometimes you wonder how he gets up, but he always does. But these Cowboys are staying confident in what they're doing, and right now, field position defensively, if they can come up with a good play, the game could change in their momentum. Just takes one play. Dumas looking for Placidus. Nobody's out there, Mark, and he makes the catch. Across midfield to the 46-yard line. What happened is the Dreadnoughts pick up 30. A flag comes down late. Yeah, a flag comes down late. It may come back, but that's a blown coverage. Oh, boy. Cowboys get a huge break. This is coming back. Yeah, you can see that from the beginning. You have a receiver wide open out there. The idea is to get the snap as quickly as you can and throw it out there to him, which we were able to do. Unfortunately, it's going to come back for a penalty, but that was a, a blown defensive coverage there by Osceola, and they're dodging a bullet here by the penalty. Play ineligible downfield on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Replay third down. Water break. So Lakeland will be pushed back to the 20-yard line. When we come back, it's third down for the Dreadnoughts. 20 to 7 is your score. The regional semifinals on Bright House Sports. Here in Lakeland, it's 20 to 7. The Dreadnoughts leading Osceola midway through the third quarter. Cowboys had a good chance on their last drive, but unable to cash in. And if you're Lakeland, you got to be careful here. Backed up third and long. You can't have a turnover in this situation. Dean Dumas goes one way, throws the other, and wisely throws it away incomplete. That's really a smart play by Dumas, recognizing the situation that if he completes that pass, it's not going to be for, but for a minimal gain. So instead of that, throw the ball away. The main thing at that situation is not giving up a turnover. Good job, good decision by your quarterback. So Ian Bacon on the field to punt it away. Fourth down, 17. Dwight Fagan back to receiver. Fagan's going to be taken down. Lakeland continues to put the best athletes on special teams. DJ Alexander making that play. He made the winning interception last week in that game against St. Cloud. So when you look at Osceola as a program, as far as playoff wins are concerned, in the county, look at the playoff wins, Mark, in Osceola County. 
28 compared to the second best team that has two. You talk about wow. county supremacy, you're looking at it. Yeah, that's domination right there. And they certainly would like to get to that next level and start accumulating the state championships that uh, Bill Castle and Lakeland have been able to do. But that's a, that's a dominating stat right there. First down and 10. In motion, goes Devontae Small and a flag comes down. Randy Hampton may have jumped a little soon there. Prior to the snap, encroachment on the defense, five-yard penalty, first down. Osceola's a program still talking about that championship in 1998. It's a huge banner it's on the side of their school. That's the only one in county history. Yeah, they certainly want to try to add to that, and they feel like they've got the team to do it. Same type of play that busted it big. Reggie Hall, though, this time is taken down in the backfield by Randy Hampton. Okay, if you're Randy Hampton, you jump off sides, you give up the five yards, what do you do? You come back to the next play, you bring pressure off the edge, come in and drop the uh, running back for a loss. This guy's a special player, and we talked about him in the open, and he's just an aggressive kid uh, and just has a nose for the football, knows how to get himself in the right situations to make plays, a big play there on the defensive side. Randy Hampton often compared to Chauncey Clark, a past great Lakeland defensive end. Second down. Williams will look long. A man out there. And incomplete. Or running for it was Josh Antoine, but he could not separate. He was blanketed in that secondary. Yeah, Josh Antoine looked like maybe he couldn't find or locate that football because uh, it was a little bit underthrown. Like he could have kind of stopped his route a little bit, come back to the center and taking a shot at that, but he kept running, didn't get an opportunity to get his hands on it, but he had in po inside position on the defender. Yeah, I think you're right, Mark. He may have lost it, perhaps in these bright lights. Devon Peebles was right there all over him, also 35 for Lakeland. Third down six, big play. Osceola will call a timeout. Mark, in high school football, clock keeps running. Every possession critical, every possession. Osceola needs to at least win field position at this point. Yeah, they really do. They're, they're in good situation right now here at the 40. If they're not able to pick up this first down, you know, pin Lakeland back and let their defense go out. But it, we, we knew it was going to be a, a game of limited possessions because both teams possessed the ball for long periods of time, uh, driving the ball through the run game. So Osceola certainly would like to pick this up, but if not, create that field position uh, with their punter. Well, the playoffs continue on Bright House Sports Network, the Subway Restaurant's Game of the Week. And that side is to be announced. Mark, I know you cannot wait to mark your calendar, whether you'll be working or, or watching on TV that night is another story, but still yeah. trying to figure out which teams were covered. Yeah, exciting though, man. It's a great time of year. I love high school sports, especially in the playoffs. I like to see how kids respond to this pressure and just a fun time. So third down six. It's Williams under pressure. He gets away. And now throws it right to a Lakeland defender who nearly had six. Damon Peebles could not have been more wide open. And he just dropped. Yeah, ill-advised throw there. Right. Breaks a tackle, and he's not in position to get it to his receiver. And that's a gift right there. Damon Peebles, I think, was already thinking about how he was going to look running in the end zone for that touchdown, unable to make the reception and forcing an Osceola punt. Missed opportunity. Well, Peebles will be thinking about that probably the rest of his life. I think part of that was the wobble on the football made it a little more difficult to catch than it ordinarily would be. Still, Lakeland able to force the punt. Now Raquan Southworth with a defender right in his face. And it looked like the defender was maybe too close. As we flash back now to 2008, Lakeland taking on Osceola. Aaron Trudell, the Lake Gibson transfer. This touchdown run puts the Dreadnoughts up 14-7. Osceola comes back, though. Jensen Watson makes the score tied at 14. And then it was Scooter Hagens 
Looking for Javaris McCroy and let number nine do the rest. 29 yards to the touchdown. 21-14, Lakeland wins the district. Yeah, and you can see a close game. Could have gone either way, just to play here or play there. So Osceola certainly feels like they're up to the task uh, to beat this Lakeland team. Here's Taylor Placidas. He's been effective. Picks up six. Mark Placidas last week, 150 yards, hmm. three touchdowns against St. Cloud. Yeah, a game where they were cruising in that and ended up making a, a game of it. Flag is down. Looks like this is going to come back. So wipe out the Placidas run. Illegal shift on the offense. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. Well, Lakeland had no school all week with the Thanksgiving holiday. So they practiced with no school mark and in the AM pretty much every single day. A different look. You usually practice after school in the AM. Yeah, a little difficult schedule when you're practicing when you're not accustomed to it. You don't have school kind of out of your rhythm. First down, 15. Placidas able to pick up four yards to the 21-yard line. Yeah, if you're Osceola, again, defensively, go out and, and stop Lakeland again. You, you've kind of created a, a long field for them. If they're not able to get the first down and punt it away, you're going to be in excellent field position again. Play sound defense. Look for opportunities for turnovers to get yourself back in the football game. Second down. Dumas, play fake. Looks out there, Ian Bacon. He is level. Uh, this Osceola Cowboys defense can come up and stick you. James Farley, again, making up for that Eric Andre play early. Yeah, and if you're a young kid watching a football game and you want to learn how to tackle, you might want to take a look at James Farley. Uh, that's a perfect form tackle. A good job of reading the little dump off, coming up and making a big stick, and uh, bringing up a long third and about 13 yards for Lakeland. Excellent well, play. He plays in the secondary mark next year. They're going to take him and move him to linebacker. James Farr. He shows right there he's probably up to the task because that's a good form tackle and very physical. He's got a good, a big enough, he's a big enough kid to be able to do it. No gain on the last play. Now third down. Cunningham ain't going to get anything. So Osceola's defense starting to chomp at the bit. And Deshaun Montgomery, who made the big play in the first quarter, off the fumble recovery, sends Lakeland's offense off the field. Well, Deshaun Montgomery doing a good job of grabbing some jersey there and hanging on, slinging the running back to the ground. But they've created a good situation here. They should come out of this with excellent field position, especially if they get any kind of punt return. Ian Bacon now to kick it away. The rush was on. And Bacon still gets a marvelous kick in the air. From the 25, it's Dwight Fagan. And Lakeland has been superior on special teams here tonight. That's a tremendous punt right there by number 86, Ian Bacon. When he needed it the most, Lakeland's backed up. They've not been able to do anything on the offensive side. They had the long field, and he blasts the punt. Great job there by your punter. And you look at Ian Bacon, two marks, six foot five, 200 pounds. He's a senior this year. Coach Castle says that this could be the sleeper recruit in my entire group. He can play a great tight end, and yes, he can come on the field and punt like Mark Royals every now and then. <laughs> and he's got a big frame for that for, to grow into and put some size and strength on, so he could be a tremendous player. Here come the Cowboys again. Reggie Hall looking for a seam. This is a tough little running back to wrestle to the turf. He gets it up to the 46, and that will be a Cowboys first down. Yeah, and you talk about undersized running back. I mean, this kid is not, not big at all, but he runs very low to the ground, so very hard to find him. Uh, on the night, seven rushes for 92 yards, but he does an excellent job cutting back against the grain, uh, running very low to the ground to pick up a first down and putting Ola in excellent field position. I think he needs to touch it more. What do you think? I'd keep feeding him. That's their bread and butter, run the football, and he's been effective when he's touched it tonight. First down. Again, it's Hall. He runs into a wall. Yeah, definitely a tough running back. Logan Cochran there to make the stop. There was one game, Mark, earlier this year where Reggie Hall was tackled 
thrown out of bounds and into the Gatorade can. Knocked it over, and Coach looked at his running back and said, well, is he okay? But he popped right back up. He is tough. There's time and again when Coach Nichols says, Paul, you see him take a shot. You wonder if he's going to get up, and he does every single time. Well, it's not a bad place to run into the Gatorade tub. You know, get a little drink while you're over there, get refreshed. But, yeah, he's a tough kid. Second down. Take it to Hall this time and pitch it. Well designed. Dwight Fagan. But look at the speed of Lakeland. They are just running down everything tonight, and they don't buy the fakes. Trey Dempsey there to grab him by the leg. Yeah, that was a good play call. You fake uh, the misdirection and run the option, pitch it to your running back. But Lakeland's been very disciplined, and they do have the speed to cover some ground. You can see the pitch right here. And a great open field tackle by number 31, Trey Dempsey. I'll tell you what, Mark, this defense for Lakeland, they are coached up tonight to take care of what Osceola's doing. They really are. You can tell they spend a lot of time in, in, in the film room, learning where to be, and then being disciplined in their, in their lanes. Uh, the defensive ends have done a good job creating the edge, forcing it back to the middle. To where T.J. Simmons and crew can, can make plays, so they played a, a very good football game. I mean, Mark, tonight, as Sean Murin, our statistician, just hands me a note, eight tackles for losses for Lakeland. That means that a lot of times they know what is coming. Yeah, and it's recognition. It's knowing when you have the opportunity, when you see this, the, uh, the space, the defenders are shooting through and catching the, uh, the quarterback and the running backs in the backfield. And not only that, but they're tackling very well. That's part of it. You can get back there. A lot of times you see them miss tackles, but they've done a good job of wrapping up and getting the players on the ground. So this game tonight, as you look at Taylor Placidas, Lakeland looking to move on to the regional finals. And the winner would meet the winner of Tampa Bay Tech and Gaither. Right now, the Titans lead the Cowboys in that game in Tampa, 14-10. Tampa Bay Tech, we saw them earlier this year, Mark. Definitely a good football team. Gaither not had a chance to see the Jason Stokes' team, but Brooke Bennett has spent a lot of time over there, and definitely a team that can play. Third down, 10. Fake, Williams now, fires, and it's caught. That's an offensive throw of the game. And making the grab is Daquan Harrison at the 39-yard line. Yeah, Daquan Harrison doing a good job of, of running his route, a little seam route, and he gets himself with the defender at his back and a good delivery by, by Williams. You can see they don't move the ball very often, but he sets his feet, delivers the ball on time, a good route, good reception. Osceola on the move. I believe that's their first yard through the air all night. That's actually the second. They had one on a screen to McCray mark earlier, but didn't even really qualify much as a pass. So the first real chunk coming right there. And you have to think that they're going to have to be able to be effective moving the ball through the air to, to get points on the board because Lakeland really has that uh, running game under control. The snap, false start on the offense, five-yard penalty, first down. So it's been impressive about Lakeland on the defensive side. They've given up a couple of big runs in the game, but their defense is sort of bent but not broken. So they've come back out after giving up the yardage and then shut them down. So this is the final seconds of the third quarter. We've had no scoring in this frame, but I have a feeling we're in for quite a ride in quarter number four. Let's see if the Cowboys try and get a playoff. I don't think they will. We'll just let it wind down here. And we'll switch sides of the field. And when we come back, quarter number four at Bryant Stadium. It's 27. Lakeland leading Osceola on the Subway Restaurant's Game of the Week, the regional semifinals. Quarter number four of this regional semifinal. Lakeland leads Osceola 20 to 7. Bright House Sports Network, Subway Restaurants Game of the Week. Here's some more games from around the area. Armwood taking care of business. Jesuit over Robinson, and that's a rematch of a game we saw earlier this year. A lot of these games, basically district rematches. Palm Harbor and East Lake tied at 26. Yeah, Armwood rolling along, not surprising, 23 to nothing over Hillsboro. They're, they, they're like a small college over there. They're really special. I'd be surprised if, if they don't uh, hoist the state championship trophy this year. First down, 15. 
Williams hands it off. Running right into a wall is Dwight Fagan. He picks up a couple. T.J. Simmons, a major factor tonight for this Lakeland defense. Yeah, he's really improved his ability to read offenses. That's why you see him around the ball all the time. Uh, struggled with that a little bit last year. Coach Castle believes he's a, a, a potential D1 player, but his ability to read that offense is really getting him in the right position a lot more. Second down, 13. Williams, option, takes off himself. Able to pick up seven yards, taken down by Randy Hampton. It'll be third down and about four. And I'd have to say they're in four down territory, a couple of downs here to pick up the first down. Able to squeeze this in there and get a touchdown. An interesting fourth quarter. Osceola, their high school mark, you walk into their facilities, you do a lot of UCF games. I thought I was at UCF when I walked into their gymnasium and their weight room, the school. They've totally rebuilt it, and the program really feeding off it. Yeah, just the fact that they don't have to walk a half a mile from their locker room to the practice field anymore is a big deal. They've really got a tremendous facility for, the, for these young kids to thrive in. Third down about five. High throw, and this is picked off. The Dreadnoughts take advantage of a golden opportunity, and there goes Brian Mitchell. I mentioned earlier in the game that this young man, number 16, Bill Castle thought he would never crack the lineup. Here he is tonight making a huge play in a key situation. Yeah, Brian Mitchell, the recipient of, a, of an errant throw by Williams, just over, shoots his receiver. He's standing there, the ball hits him right in the hands, but he does a really nice job after he does make the interception, allowing his defensive teammates to get up the field, create some space for him, a good move right there for additional yardage. That's a tremendous play by this Lakeland defense to be able to stop Osceola. Again, they're only down by 13 points and we're on the move. So a big interception and turnover for Lakeland. That's the third turnover tonight. And how about Mitchell? Not good enough to start on JV, but good enough to make a huge play right there. Cunningham able to pick up three yards. And Mark, that's what high school football is all about. If you don't make it once, Try out again. Don't give up. I'm very familiar with that. You know my story, and I, I preach that to anybody that will listen to me. Is you know opportunities are present themselves, and if somebody says no, you keep working hard, and good things uh, will happen to you. I tell people all the time: the harder you work, the luckier you'll find yourself becoming. And a love number 16 story. Raheem Dumas now picking his way across the 35. We're going to have a third down and five coming up. And if you're Lakeland, this is a great situation for you. You're, you're up by 13 points. You've got the ball uh, deep in Osceola's territory. The clock is your friend. Keep running the football. Take precious seconds off the clock. Bill Castle knows what he was faced with last week, up 26 to 0, hanging on for a 26-21 win. Right now, just keep controlling the ball and take the seconds off the clock. Third down. And movement looked like Devin Goodman. Devin Goodman may have flinched. Prior to the snap, full start on the offense. Five yards, third down. Coach Castle likes to have his quarterback come over to the sideline every play. We can look him in the eye, settle him down, make a good decision on the play call. It's worked for him for years. I know Jeff Carlson, our your, your buddy and mine, has issue with that, but I think it's a good idea. Dumas dumps it off. Cunningham trying to shake free. His defense for Osceola's played well tonight. Wrestling him out of bounds is... Akeem Francis, number 11, the first man there. I'll tell you what, and we're up in the press box here. When there's no window, so we can hear the hitting going on. I'll tell you, this is a very, very physical football game. A lot of big hitting going on, physical play. It's been exciting to watch. Very high press box, too, as you can see here at Bryant Stadium. A gorgeous view of the field we have. 
And that artificial surface, Mark, looks like it was just rolled out this morning. It's been there all season. Yeah, I talked to some of the players before the game. They really like this surface. Makes them a little bit faster. Uh, you get secure footing all the time. Typically, this time of year, without this turf, this field is pretty chewed up. It's fourth down. So Dumas trying to draw Seal offsides, and he may have done it. Looked like eight. C.C. Smithson may have jumped Prior early. Prior to the snap, encroachment on the defense, five yards, first down. That's exactly what Coach Castle was in his ear about. You go out, hit him with the hard count, see if we can get a cheap five-yard penalty. They were able to do that, moving the chains. Now the clock becomes Osceola's enemy. They start them young here, don't they? That's the great thing. Mount Bryan Stadium as the 13th first down for the Dreadnoughts at the 29. Placidus, Taylor Placidus, cutting it upfield, and he gets to the 20, picks up eight. Yeah, just a direct handoff to him and a nice cut. He sees an open to the left side there, plants the right foot, and gets out there in a hurry for a big first down gain of eight yards. Again, Lakeland on the move, doing exactly what they like to do, just pound the ball, pound the ball, pound the ball, get those precious seconds off the clock. Second down. Placidus back to the line of scrimmage. Doesn't pick up much. You see Raheem Dumas, Lakeland's quarterback, and what he's doing right now to Placidus, just handing the ball off. Raheem Dumas said, that's what I did when I was on JV. I was a sophomore playing quarterback, and all we did was run the football. That's the extent of my quarterback experience. And I got moved to varsity, put the secondary, and I'm a better defensive back. That's where I want to play in college eventually. Middle Tennessee State right now, the leading suitor for Raheem Dumas to play in the secondary. Well, and I think playing the secondary helps you as a quarterback. You have an idea of what those defenders are thinking and where they're going to be on the football field. Now Forrest Cunningham trying to get that first down, but he's going to come up short. So fourth down here for Lakeland. Decision time. The Dreadnoughts may try a field goal here to tack on three more. Yeah, I think you keep the clock running. You need about a yard, maybe a yard and a half to go for a first down. It won't surprise me at all. Bill Castle just says, hey, you know, we're here to win this football game. We're going to go for it on fourth down. You know what's great about this Lakeland program, though, Mark? Scooter Hagens called Raheem Dumas and said, don't worry, the same thing happened with me. You got to do what's best for your team. I love how players of the past connect with players of today. Yeah, you talk about accepting your role. Whatever your role is, just do it. It's for the betterment of the football team. It helps everybody. Dumas. Trying to get the first down. He is going to be close. And they say it's going to be first down Osceola. So Dumas just shy of first down yardage. Hagan's calling Dumas. Also, Stewart Butler calling Taylor Placidus earlier this year. 27. And we're back to Bryant Stadium and this regional semifinal after this. Dumas and the Lakeland offense stopped a turnover on downs and it's Osceola football at the 19 yard line mark right now it's do or die for the Cowboys as Mike Pouncey looks on. Yeah I think it's a good call by Lakeland to go for it if you don't get it which they did you still have Osceola backed up inside the 20 yard line they have to go the whole field uh, so it's a good a good risk reward there. They pitch it. And it's the little guy, Reggie Hall. He's got more of the carries in the second half. And Stephon McRae has not been a factor. And T.J. Simmons once again says, you are not going to cut this upfield. Number two all over the field tonight. He really has, and he's a very physical downhill guy. As you can see, play after play, man. When he, He's not just going to get you on the ground. He's going to make you remember number two. He's got good speed to get through openings when he has to. He's a very sound tackler and a very physical president on that defensive side. Williams in trouble, and he's going to go down. Sacked in the backfield, Randy Hampton. Hello. 
And if you're a defensive end, you're Randy Hampton, you got to just keep your motor running. You never know. Uh, just keep pursuing when the opportunity is going to be there. As he, he gets his eighth sack of the season, you can see he gets around the, the offensive lineman. The play looks like it's going away, but he keeps his motor going, keeps pursuing, and is able to drag the quarterback down. Third down and long. Yes! Williams throws it too high. His receiver did not make the best effort either. As Daquan Harrison gave up on him. I tell you, you really think here at uh, fourth down that uh, you'd like to be in four down territory when you're backed up. I think you have to think about kicking this ball away with still over five minutes to go in the game and rely on your defense to get the ball back for you. I'm running out for Doug Nichols' team. As the punt by Deshaun Congreaves. And he'll take a Cowboys bounce and roll down to the 36-yard line. As we'll continue to look at scores from around the Tampa Bay area. Flag is down on this play at the 40. At St. Thomas Aquinas. District runner-up in Class 7A. That's amazing, but St. Thomas had a couple losses this year, so they are the bridesmaids instead of the brides. Countryside and Lincoln upset in the first round. How about the Trojans not getting in? Then district runners-up won six of 16 first-round games. Wow. Changing the guard a little bit, huh? It's been a crazy year with all the realignments and teams moving up and moving back. Talking to Ahmad Black during halftime, and it's amazing how back in 06. Holding on the receiving team, 10-yard penalty from the end of the kick, first down. When he was a senior in high school, Plant was 4A, Lakeland was 5A when they just went up to 6A. Now, Lakeland's 7A and Plant's 8A. They've jumped Lakeland when they used to be behind. It's weird how the alignment has shaped out. Yeah, a lot of change, and the thing that hasn't changed is Bill Castle and being here as long as he has and adapting to all the different changes, the different kids. He says it's a different world, but he's still doing a tremendous job of putting guys in situations to be successful. Lasitas, look at this little guy run. Picks up six on first down. Hasn't been explosive tonight, but as he's taken down by James Farley, he has been effective. Yeah, the kid runs the ball very well and um, finds little openings, got enough speed to, to get through them, and tough kid, dragging tackles along with him. Kind of a little playmaker. Can you imagine the Lakeland running backs that he has to look up to? Chris Rainey, <laughs> Jason Guzman, and Stuart Butler last year. Second three. This breakout by Braxton Huggins. He nearly really broke that one. Yeah, Braxton Huggins doesn't get his foot grabbed at the last second. He's off to the races there, probably for a touchdown. And that's the risk you run sometimes as a, as a defensive unit. When you stack that box, if it breaks to the outside, you give up that big play. That's exactly what Lakeland wanted, though. They didn't get the, the touchdown, but they moved the chains. Right now, they're worried about the clock more than anything else. Just maintain control of the ball. You've got this ball game in control. Let's finish it out. The finals coming into our trucks. 27-3, Palmetto over Hardy. So the Tigers moving on. They win the rematch. First and 10. Dumas hands it off. Placidus. Across midfield, down to the 41. That's an 18-yard gain, another first down. Yeah, just a direct handoff to Placidus up the middle. And you talk about a kid getting through a hole in a hurry. Watch how quickly he bursts through this. Sees the opening, great blocking up front by the offensive line. Gets into the middle of the field for a tremendous first down gain. Again, just a little spark plug. It's a playmaker giving him the opportunity, and he has a hole burst through it for a big first down. So a Lakeland team that made more headlines off the field than on it. Just continues to take care of business within the sidelines. Let's see this one more time. Runs 
into a tackler, picks up two as he was wrestled down by Dominic Davis. But Mark, you got to love the way these kids have been unfazed all year long. Yeah, and the disappointing thing is you have three kids that were transferring over, and, and one kid, and this is his senior year. I mean, that's a critical time in a kid's life. And I, I don't know how much that's going to infect, uh, affect his uh, possibilities of going to college and where he may end up. But that's really the sad part in the whole thing is kids miss a, a year of high school football. Yeah, another sad part. I'll get to it in just a second. Second down and eight. As Palmetto moves on, the furthest they've been since 1986. Morris Cunningham picks up a couple. Mark, I know you were impressed with Jadrian Clark, the Lakeland quarterback who so unfortunate, ineligible, ineligible to play all season long. But what if number 10 was in a helmet tonight? What if he was leading Lakeland in the huddle? Well, Bill Castle talked about uh, how, how this kid improved throughout the year and his arm strength just improved. But just looking at him as an athlete, he was out there throwing the ball around. Good looking kid, but he missed his senior year. I mean, that's the kind of uh, time you make a statement and figure out what your college career is going to be all about. I feel for him, uh, seemed like a nice kid. Um, but the unfortunate thing is, he's watching from the sidelines. Dumas gets out of trouble. Now it's going to be wrestled down as Deshaun Montgomery was there to make the play. Let's send it down to Brooke Bennett. Brooke, what have you got down there? Is it my favorite part of the game? Drew, this is your favorite part of the game, fan of the game. You know, you always know you're going to come to Bryant Stadium. There's going to be fans, diehard Dreadnought fans. Tiffany Kitchens, a graduate of Lakeland, a parent, a fan, and a teacher here. These dreadnoughts are going into the postseason, playing a great game tonight. How exciting is this part of the season now? It's very exciting, and it's always nice to be a part of this at school and in the community. It's wonderful. So much tradition goes on here. We saw Maude Black, Mike Housey here tonight, Bill Castle doing a great thing here. Is this just a community that just wraps around their arms around this team? Yes, everyone wraps their arms around Lakeland High School. School is loves to be a part of Lakeland High School, and we love Lakeland football. Well, Tiffany, congratulations. You get our football. And uh, Drew, she's got the sunglasses on, new fashion. She took the lenses out. She can see the game clearly. No better fan than with Tiffany down here tonight. Oh, wow. Just what we need, new ideas to make those <laughs> glasses more of a fashion statement. They're hard to come by, though. I've been doing games for a while, and I still don't have a pair. Oh, Castle, happy birthday, coach. And I guarantee you no place he'd rather celebrate it than on his home turf at Bryant Stadium celebrating another playoff win. This one fielded at the 16, and again, special teams. Just has taken over for the Dreadnoughts. Anton Moody makes the tackle. And look at some of the faces of high school football, some of the great coaches that we see year round. I mean, guys like Earl Garcia have been around forever, and he's got almost half the wins that Castle does. That's how great Bill Castle has been over the years. That's amazing. Look at that number, 359 wins for a football coach is just tremendous. And, you know, he passes the credit along to his assistant coaches. He can't do it without him. But that's a guy that's, you said, 66 years old tomorrow, still loves the game, loves the preparation, loves the kids. Just a tremendous job. Randy Hampton faked out of his shoes, but still manages to make the sack. <laughs> he's having fun right now. Yeah, he should be celebrating. He's played a good football game. And uh, my hat's off to this Lakeland defense because they really kind of got the ball rolling uh, by shutting down this Osceola offense with very physical play and have really made a statement here tonight. Pass is incomplete. So, Mark, as we look now for Lakeland, I think it's tough to pick a player of the game. If there's one guy that really stands out for you, who do you think that would be? You know, I'd, I'd have to go to the defensive side of the ball. I thought T.J. Simmons really stepped his game up and, and kind of ignited the whole football team. And defensively, I think, is where the game turned. He was very physical, made plays all over the field, got the ball back for them offensively to be able to go out and score. You know, if, it's, if, if I'm voting number two, there's uh, the top of the list. You know what, if Jeff Carlson's watching, he is going to absolutely <laughs> eat my lunch because every time he votes, he gets overruled as the ball's on the ground. Rossi'll be able to pick it up, but you know what? I'm going to agree with that, and Chris McCulley agrees with that. All so, right. Mark, great choice. <laughs> <All right. laughs> 
I like it even better knowing that uh, Carlson's in the mix here and I didn't get overruled. <laughs> Carlson goes crazy because he picks the player of the game and every week we just have an issue or don't agree or something. That just shows you he's got poor judgment on his decisions, man. We've got to get with him on that. But, yeah, T.J. Simmons has played a whale of a football game and, you know, you can, uh, you can win a lot of ways and establishing yourself on the defensive side uh, is a big deal and that kind of got the whole, whole thing going in their favor tonight. Yep. Simmons played awesome. I think Randy Hampton definitely worthy of mention. Raquan Southward, an outstanding game, but Simmons shutting down that Osceola run game, that was clearly the key to the ball game. Clearly the key, and I think it'll serve them well as they uh, advance here and, and move on to the next round. You know, they say all the time, defenses win championships, and if, if that's an indication, I think Lakeland's well on their way. Berkeley Prep has advanced. The Buccaneers win 21-0. So they are going to the state semifinals in Class 3A. And here the Dreadnoughts will also move on. Another regional final for Lakeland. And it'll be either Gaither or Tampa Bay Tech. So Raheem Dumas and the Lakeland Dreadnoughts will head onto the field and snap it one more time before leaving Bryant Stadium victorious. Mark, what was the most impressive thing you saw tonight? Well, I think it's a, it's Lakeland coming out and uh, playing the way they did on the defensive side. You know, it took them a little while to get established, and, and I think that set the tone for the football game. And, you know, when you can go out and execute the best play in football where you take the ball and kneel down in victory, uh, you've done a nice job. And, and my hat's off to Bill Castle and the Lakeland football team. That'll do it. The Lakeland Dreadnoughts don't get any points in the second half, but they don't need it. They turn it over to the defense. And T.J. Simmons, Randy Hampton, and company, along with Jalen Stevenson, they just do the rest. He can beat you with offense, or he can beat you with defense. Lakeland victorious again by 13. When we come back, our player of the game, and later, Bill Castle on the field right after this. Bright House Sports Network game of the week. We have a final. The Dreadnoughts defeat the Osceola Cowboys 20 to 7. Player of the game, TJ Simmons, only a junior, coming out here defensively and just shutting down the Cowboys. So how big of a win is this? As now you guys are advancing in this postseason. You know they ended our our consecutive win streak throughout. Uh, like our we had a 53 game win streak. You know and. It's not like an official rival like Kathleen and us, but, you know, we had, came here with a chip on our shoulders. So, you know. You did a good thing. 188 yards you guys held them to when they consecutively averaged over 300. How good are the Dreadnoughts just starting to get? Coach Castle talks about the confidence in this team all the time. Yeah. Our coaches, Coach Tab, Coach Jason Butler, our defense coordinator, Butler, he, he keep us going, keep us motivated every week. Like. You know, they don't boost our heads up and they don't put us down. They keep us right in the middle where we hungry, but we know that we can beat teams. They tell us that we, before the game, they tell us that they know we're better than us, but we know we can come out and prove it. We just got to show up. We, we can't show up. We just got to come out and, and give them, show them what we really got. TJ, this, this team and this, this season for you guys has been tough. You guys have had a lot of fingers pointed in your direction, but you guys all stay humble out here on the field. Every time you come out on the field, are you guys just wanting to prove just how dedicated this team is? Of course, because, you know, they always talking about how we ain't the real Lakeland Dreadnought since Rainy them left. But, you know, we back, our slogan of the year is adversity and accountability. So, you know, since we couldn't have our original team, we had to put accountability on other people and we came out all year and improved everybody wrong. How pumped up is this team going to be when you guys get in the locker room to celebrate this win tonight? You know we're going to be happy but at the same time we know we still got work to do. All right TJ well congratulations you are our player of the game keep that helmet and sport it at home or in your locker you, and of course when we come back we'll have a complete wrap up of tonight's game with Drew Felios and Mark Royals. Welcome back to Bryant Stadium. The Dreadnoughts are moving on to the regional final. 20-7 is the final score over the Cowboys. 
of Osceola. Drew Felios, Mark Royals, and sandwiched in between us is the winning head coach, Bill Castle. Coach, another great win. Number 360 on the career, I might add, but more importantly, you guys are still alive. Oh, you're definitely right. When, when, that's, that's your goal is to win and, and try to move on. Uh, uh, got a great effort out of our defense uh, second half and uh, just really pleased with our overall team effort. Uh, uh, offensively, we kind of stumped up a little bit there in the second half, but I think we were playing conservative not to try to have turnovers and uh, worked out for us. Coach, we talked before the game, and uh, this was a, truly a team effort. Not a lot of guys that, that are superstar type players, but I'd say overall within the scheme of what you're trying to do, you got a lot of really good football players. They work hard, and, and they really have played as a team all year long, so we're very proud of them. It's amazing, too, how guys like Taylor Placidas and Randy Hampton, they use their undersized frames to their advantage. Coach, nobody could block Hampton out there tonight. Randy's had a great year for us, and, he, and you're right. He's an undersized defensive end, but he, he, he's got savvy instincts, and he makes great plays out there for us. Well, you got to think, too, as you move on, if your defense continues to play like it did tonight, your chances of getting where you ultimately want to go in the state championship uh, looks pretty good. Well, you got to go one at a time, and, uh, you know, I'm not sure who we're going to play, who, who won tonight, but, uh, you know, we'll start working on that next week. And you can't look ahead. If you do, you'll be packing your bags. Well, so. there's one thing that Drew and I talk about with you is you never seem to grow weary of what you're doing. You still have a pep in your step, and you still enjoy what you're doing. You've been doing it a long time, but you're still really enjoying I it. I love it. It's, it's, it's like my first year this year. So, it's, you know, I just I enjoy it. Gaither leading right now, Coach, 17-14 late in that football game over Tampa Bay Tech. Tomorrow's your birthday. Is there any better way to spend your birthday than here winning a game on your home turf at Bryant Stadium? No, this is a great birthday present for me, so uh, I look forward uh, to my birthday tomorrow, but uh, I look forward to getting ready for next week. Congratulations. Coach Castle, great Happy job. Happy birthday and congratulations. Right, great stuff. Coach. Bill Castle, another win, just another night at the office, his office here. Bryant Stadium and Lakeland. Impressive. They they came out, did what they had to do. Yeah. I think they played very well as a team, and a couple of guys stood out. T.J. Simmons really, I, I think, turned the tide of the football game in that whole defensive side. Uh, Hampton played a great game. Uh, they managed the ball well enough offensively to get enough points to win the game. I like what I saw, and you know, it's it's fun to be around him because doing it for 36 years, he st seems like he really enjoys it. Final score tonight: 27. Lakeland wins. They are going to another. Regional final, their seventh out of the last eight years. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by Subway Restaurants. Come into your local Subway in the entire month of November. Get buy one, get one on a six-inch breakfast sandwich. That good from 7 to 9 a.m. every day. Subway, eat fresh. Mark, tremendous job. And next week, we are headed to the regional finals. That pairing to be announced. We're not sure. We'll check out the pairings tomorrow, and we will let everybody know as soon as possible, but great work. Yeah, thanks, Drew, and looking forward to the next game. So for Mark Royals, for Brooke Bennett down on the sidelines, and our entire Bright House Sports Network crew, Chris McCulley, our producer, Bob Herman, our director, Ken O'Leary, our production manager, I'm Drew Felios. Lakeland wins 20-7 to over Osceola. We will see you next week, and have a terrific holiday weekend. Now join our regularly scheduled program in progress.